In the garden, God created man as a pinnacle of his creation, making man in his own image, breathing into him life. And man chose to do their own thing instead of what God had asked them to do. And they took of the fruit and they turned their back on God. And because of that, God had to turn his back on man. But God loved man took an animal he created providing clothes and he made a promise that someone was going to come and crush the serpent's head and his heel would be bruised and he made a plan to bring back man to him through jesus and he turned around and he's waiting for man to turn back and be connected and when we get to a point in our lives where we <coughs> seek god and we reach out for him he takes us in and when he takes us in he wants us to stay with them. He wants us to, to progress as his children spiritually. He wants us to stay centered on him. He doesn't want us to turn back. And the passage that uh, Wayne read communicates to us three keys of staying centered on God and not turning back. Once you become a Christian, God wants you to stick to it. Jesus said, if you put your hand to the plow, don't look back. When uh, uh, we have these stories in scripture where uh, the sorcerers became Christians and they burned all their books and we have others that bur burned their farm equipment and followed. There's no turning back. You've heard the illustration of uh, the, the Roman soldiers who brought their ships into bay and as they got up to go into battle, they shot arrows to the ships and burned them because they wanted the soldiers to know there's no way back. There's only one way, it's forward. You can't go back. There's no way home. You're gonna have to stay and fight. You're gonna have to move forward. And in essence, as Christians, that's what it's about. It's about us making a commitment that I'm gonna live for him and not for myself. And there is no turning back. When the Hebrew writer wrote his letter, he's encouraging them, what you've got is better. Don't turn back. Don't go back. But we know from the Israelites that once they were freed and delivered from Egypt, they wanted to go back. Sometimes we have, it's in our nature, sometimes to go back to the old way, to the fondness of the familiar. But Jesus is calling us and saying, hey, if you come after me, you must deny yourself. Take up your cross daily and follow me. I must be Lord of all or I can't be Lord at all. And so in this context the writer is communicating that false teachers were going to come in and today in the world we live in there are false teachers saying all kinds of things about the bible and about god's word that are not true and here god is trying to make sure his people stay centered and it says when someone comes to you and they they got signs and, and wonders and say let us follow other gods gods you have not known and let us worship them you must not listen to the words of the prophet or dreamer the Lord your God is testing you to find out whether you're going to love him with all your heart and all your soul God wants you no turning back hold on and don't let go stay true to him stay centered on him and then he says it is the lord your god you must follow and you must revere keep his commands and obey him serve him and hold fast to him so jacob here's your three points right. um, first of all you need to look at god secondly you need to listen to his commands and obey them and finally, we sing the song, I will serve you because I love you. We need to love God, serve him and cling to him. So let's look at these three things real quickly. First of all, look, follow the Lord your God and revere him. Follow him. Jesus, I mean, throughout scripture, there's examples of people who decided they were going to follow God and not man, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel, and we, we can go on with others. God calls us to follow him. We have to keep our eyes on God. Who do you follow? 
We live in a world today that follow all kinds of people, all kinds of messages. In fact, our world and Satan is constantly trying to get us to follow other things besides God. And God says, follow me. We have to have a focus, a laser focus that keeps our eyes on God and nothing else. Paul said, I don't care if I'm judged by you or by a human court. I don't even judge myself. God is my judge. Basically, we all have to have that mindset. What matters to us is what God thinks. It's not about what other people think. It's not even about what I think about myself. It's about what does God think about this choice, about this decision. And follow God wherever he leads you. Solomon would say in Proverbs chapter 3, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your steps. It's about that. Acknowledge him in everything. Lean not on your own understanding. Follow God. When God says it, that settles it. It might not always make sense. Sometimes when Naaman was told, go dip in the Jordan, it didn't make a lot of sense. But that's where the answer was. When they came across Jericho, seven days, on the seventh day, seven times, the walls will fall down. Not the most strategic plan in the world, but they had to simply follow God. And they're to follow Him with reverence. Reverence. Last week we talked about reverence, yielding, submitting to, respect. But one thing we didn't really talk about is reverence is what you see in a child. Because Jesus said, unless you become like a little child, unless you have that kind of faith and trust, children revere and respect their parents They, for a while. And, yeah, and then things change. But do we revere God with that kind of spirit, with that dependence, with that sincerity? When we look at God's Word, do we revere it? And do we look into His Word to see, where is God trying to lead me? Sometimes we get certain answers, and for the rest of our lives, we make our own decisions. God wants to be a part of everything. Acknowledge Him in all, not some, all your ways, and He'll direct your steps. Are you looking for God's direction in your life? He cares about every single decision we make. There's his personal will. There's his moral will. There's his providential will. All those things are important. But if you for a minute don't think that God doesn't care about the way you talk and the way you dress and the tone you use, you're wrong. God cares about every aspect of our lives. And he wants us to follow him, not ourselves. Secondly, you have to listen. Keep his commands and obey him. Listen to God. Whose voice are you listening to? When I think about kids that grow up in our world today, they are exposed to so many voices, so many advertisements, so many avenues of social media, so many things that Sometimes it's almost scary, but it doesn't matter if you live now with all the technology or you lived in the 70s when I was growing up. There were voices that you had to be careful not to listen to all the other noise, but to center yourself on hearing his voice. There was a, one of those ice houses on a lake up in the north, and one of the workers there uh, would go in and do his job and leave. And one day he realized he had lost his watch. And he went in the ice house and he couldn't find it anywhere. And there was a little boy that always hung out around this ice house. And he said, I can't find my watch anywhere. And he said, well, I'll find it. And so he went in, he turned the machine off. He laid down in the sawdust in this ice house and he just listened. And pretty soon he, hear, he heard the ticking of the watch. That's basically what we have to do in our lives. we got to turn off all the racket. we got to lay down in solitude. And we've got to listen for what, what is God trying 
to tell me. A voice come out of the cloud saying, God could have said anything to his followers. And he said, in a voice come out of the cloud on the Mount of Transfiguration, this is my son whom I love, my chosen one, listen to him. Are you listening to his voice? When we take time to get away from all the other urgent things in our lives and spend time, are we really listening to God? Do we hear, do our itching ears hear what we want to hear? Or do we really open ourselves up to hear what God is really wanting to tell us in our lives? When you sit down and you open God's word and you pray before you start reading and you say, God, I'm here. I want to listen to what you've got to say to me. Try that for a week. Sit down, open your Bible, and sincerely pray, God, I want to listen to what you've got to say to me. Do that. And if you're honest, if you're like me, and you really listen, you're going to have to make some changes in your life. Because God's going to tell you some things, but you've got to open yourself up and be prepared to listen. It's not just read the chapter to get it done. And sometimes it's good to try to read as much as we can and have goals and things like that. But if we ever get away from just opening ourselves up to hearing what God is saying, then we've missed it. And finally, point 5,223. Um, love God. I will serve you because I love you. Do we love God? It says serve Him and hold fast to Him. If I love God, I will serve Him. I will do the things that He wants me to do. I will worship Him in spirit and truth. I will share my faith with other people. I will be busy in the kingdom using my gifts to encourage other people. Use whatever gifts you have to serve one another. And I will cling to Him. The verse is pretty powerful. But it's asking of us the question, are you serving God with all your heart? To see have all your heart. Or do you serve Him half-heartedly? Or do you serve Him partially? To see have all of you. And do you cling to Him? What does it mean to cling to something? We've got lots of babies now. It's amazing when you put something in a baby's hand, they'll cling to it, right? Whether it's your hand, whether it's a ring, they cling. What are things we cling to? Uh, last weekend, Johnny was up at the lease. I, I, he would come in early, uh, about 5 o'clock. I would stay out on the lease and, and come in about 7. So he, he had already gone in. I got to Riverside. There was a train stuck on the track. It wasn't moving. The fire, the fire uh, guy came over and said, it, it, it's probably going to be about two hours before this moves. Now, I grew up, I grew up, I mean, I lived in that area for about 10 years, so I kind of knew, I knew one way I could go is cut across 405 to 190 and come back, and it was going to be a long ride. And, and he said, you know the shortcut? And I said, no. And so he says, well, you go down 405, you turn on Jamison, and you turn on Utley, then you turn on, and it was Williams or Wilkerson or something that started with a W, right? In my mind, and I asked him again, did you repeat that? <laughs> and my mind was clinging to what he had to say, right? So it's, it, it's dark, and there's people lined up on uh, the Highway 19 to turn on to 405. There's a big uh, mobile uh, travel trailer type deal, RV that's up in front, and there's a car couple of other cars and me and I'm thinking they're probably all going to the same place but you never know you start calling the wrong person and so what was I clinging on to Jameson Hudley left 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 right that's what I was holding on to in my head I was clinging to that I didn't want to let it go I didn't want it to slip from my memory because I didn't want to be out in the middle of nowhere in the dark because these weren't these weren't go to the traffic light and turn this was you're going to turn on Jameson and it's a dirt road and there's nothing and there's people from the other road 980 coming your way on a dirt road so there's all these cars and you're following 
And if, if so I start kind of sinking in, okay, this RV guy must know where he's going. I'm sure he knows where he's going, right? <laughs> and then I thought, oh no, I end up in the middle of nowhere and be sacrificed or something. Anyway, maybe I didn't think that. I didn't think that. Or you think weird things, right? You're in the middle of the dark. And then anyway, we as we're going along, what am I looking through every single time we turn? Is it Jameson? Is it Utley? Is it the Dudley one? <laughs> yeah, I'm clinging to that. That's what God wants us to do with Him. Cling to Him. I wasn't, I would have rather driven 405 to 190 and taken 30 or 40 more minutes than to take a chance. If I didn't know those names in my head, I wasn't turning down that road. Even if I thought I was following somebody that knew where they went, I wouldn't take that chance. That's me. But since I knew those streets, I was clinging to the fact that if I kept turning left on those streets, I would arrive where I was supposed to arrive. And I did. What do you cling to? What are you clinging to in your life? God says, cling to me. If we're going to grow spiritually the way God wants us to grow, it's about looking, listening, and loving. Take this text this week. Think about it. And when you open God's word, invite God to speak to you. Really listen to what his word says and respond to it in your life. Today, if you're here, you need to become a Christian by being baptized into Christ. Or if there's something else we can help you with, come as we stand and sing.